Keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Looking right in front of us here. There he oh, is. Oh, on the top water. Yes, on the top water, dude. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Captain Tyler. Made Thanks it, for huh? having me, man. I am Jack. What are we gonna fish for today? Oh, we're getting some reds, some tarpon, and who knows what else. That's the fun of saltwater fishing, my man. It's a little bit windy this morning, so we're gonna kind of tuck back in behind some of these mangrove islands that are out there. It's, it's uh, just high enough of a tide to kind of get in there and fish for these redfish that we want to catch. And who okay. knows what else, you know, there's a few snook around, there's some really big trout out there. Well, I'm the student, you know, you're the captain. Uh, I've been in your shoes before, you know, <laughs> taking people out for the first time on new experiences yeah, up for fresh water. Uh, but for me on this salt water, you tell me what I got to do and uh, I'm Jack, man, let's yeah, go get her done. Get you know, to have the opportunity to come down here and uh, fish for some giant redfish or tarpon or sharks or all these monster saltwater fish. I was pumped up. I couldn't sleep. That's how excited I was to come for a trip of a lifetime in the middle of uh, you know late winter here and fish for some of these monster saltwater fish that are available here in Florida. The red fishing was a little tough to start, you know, so we were going along this flat, not really seeing a whole lot. He goes, what is that big fish right there? Like, oh man, it's a huge trout down there in the water. Oh, cast to him, you know, he made a great cast flip to him. He just ate it. Fish? Real, he's on it, he's on it. Yes, nice shot. Yeah, oh, it's baby. a big trout, look at that thing. Yeah, I'll take him. The big trout like that are in the very shallow water. They don't live out off the edges like you typically catch smaller speckled trout, and they're up in a foot of water. And uh, he made a great cast, and his first trout of his life was a, a gator trout, a big old fat monster, you know, 22 inch trout, which is a pretty good size one for here. Hey, I'm used to catching brown trout in Wisconsin, now I'm out here in the ocean. <laughs> Catching some sea trout, right? This guy right here, that's oh, a big yeah. row laden female. All right. So you don't want to keep that. But I mean, that is a fat trout. I'm liking it, man. That's a gator trout right there. Uh, all right. That's what you call them. When they're over 20 inches, that's it's gator status. This fishery is basically sight fishing. And a lot of times, you know, when I take people out, they just don't know what to look for. They have a hard time seeing these fish. It's just not an easy thing to see. That fish is under the water, there's glare, there's ripples, there's all kinds of stuff, and you have to really know what to look for. So it was awesome having Eric in the boat. He's got some amazing eyes. You can really see the fish, and he spotted a couple before me, which was quite impressive, because I do this every day. Yeah! Oh, it's a big trophy gator trout. Another big trout? Yeah. Drag ripper, look at this jump. Sweet. Nice job. Yeah. Wow, I've, what a cool looking fish. I mean, it actually, I don't know how I grab these things. I'll grab them like a normal yeah, trout. But wow, look at that. Huh? Looks like a like a brook or a speckled trout. What yeah, a cool you know, fish. These trout aren't related to the normal trout, though. They just call them that because they look like them. Yeah. So for us, in the first few minutes of the trip, to catch two trophy trout was an awesome experience. These big trout here are not easy to catch. Um, they. They've been around for a long time. They hang out in this real shallow water. It's very rare to catch one this size out off the channel edges where you catch a little, you know, 15, 18 inch keeper trout. Once they get big like this, they move up in this real skinny stuff. Uh, and they've got no predators. The dolphins and sharks can't get to them and they're too big for the birds. So they, this is where they spend the rest of their life until it gets too hot and they'll move out into the channel. But, there we go, big girl. Got him. Yes. It's nice. Baby. Oh, it's a good one too, buddy. It's a Atta good one. a boy. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh, this is awesome, dude. Thank nice. you. Thank you. See how stubborn they are, man? They really will bulldog you. He just came up and crushed that. Boom. That minnow. Yeah, he hit it and then he pulled it away from him and came back and got him again. That's great. I'm getting a workout, buddy. I'm getting a workout. It's a nice slot size fish there. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, you know what? This this fights oh. a lot like either a salmon or a big smallmouth, man. They just crush, crush the bait, scream out some line. Here he is. And I'm telling you, they fight just like a salmon. They scream drag, they pull hard. You feel it in your forearms and shoulders. It is an awesome experience catching these big redfish. Look at that, see his mouse on the bottom? So they kind of just will feed like that. You stick their tail out of the water and they'll feed and tail. Got the nice spot. So when a dolphin runs up at him, they think it's an eye and they'll attack that Sure. Tail. Beautiful sure. red, my man. Yeah, Good buddy. Job. And I'm telling you, that was one of the highlights of the trip, just to catch my first redfish. That's what you catch out here in Tampa Bay, buddy. Big trophy-sized trout and the beautiful old red right there. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. By Trilee, Angler's Trust, Berkeley Trilee, Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. And by Abu Garcia for life. Down here in Tampa Bay, the fishing is great year round. Uh, all that happens is you have different species that come in, highs and lows. We have a lot of migratory fish, and in the winter, uh, we have redfish, you know, trophy sized speckled trout, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, you can go out on a trip out here and catch 15 different types of fish in one trip in a four hour trip and have a shot at a 200 pound tarpon and a big black tip or, or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of options out here, which, and that's kind of a unique thing about this area is, this is one of the most diverse areas for fishing that you have in salt water. There's so many species. Tampa Bay is it, it completely superseded any of my expectations. Not only that, Tyler is an amazing fisherman and this fishery down here yeah. in Tampa is uh, unbelievable. Here we go. Yes. yes. Yeah, baby. I threw it right yes. in front of him. Oh. man. Dude, this is my first trip, and I am, oh, that's a good one. These oh, redfish yeah, that's are a nice awesome, one. dude. You spotted them. I just threw it right out yeah. in front of them again. It's all about making that perfect that's cast, you like you're saying. You gotta lead them a little bit. Yep, you gotta lead them. You gotta throw it out in front of them, and just let that good bait job. sit there. Oh, Oh, yeah. he's gonna get you. I love the drags on those, man. They're oh, nice and loud. so much fun, dude. This is just a rush. <laughs> Fishing at its greatest right now, catching these sight fish and these big fish up shallow. Oh. Man, they, I mean, these things are fighting like a salmon up shallow. Oh, yeah. Hook them one second, they're here. The next second, they're over uh, there. I mean, I've seen it nice on one. TV, but to feel them, feel them fight like this that's is just a, that's incredible. A close to a 30 inch fish there. Come here, big boy. Awesome. Tyler looked at me and said, Hey, you want to go and try something different? And I said, Absolutely. There's been a big school of redfish in this same area for a few weeks now, and there's literally 300 of them. Um, all, all nice big ones. And once we find them, just quietly set up in front of them and to start tossing bait. Start tossing the chum in the water and get them all excited. And once they start popping the bait, that's when you can just hammer them. He's gonna hit it. All of a sudden, it, was, it seemed like it was that magical hour. Tyler said, hey, throw this top water sabeel. Fired it back in there, bam! It was like everything was just going crazy right in front of our eyes. Got yes! Him. Yeah, baby! <laughs> on the top water! Oh, yeah, that is awesome. Oh, yeah, I had him. He oh. It, he drilled it. They're crushing those Seville's, man. They are just crushing them. Oh, man. On, big fish, on. bro. Big fish. This is oh, awesome. That's a big one. I mean, you want. That is some of the most exciting fishing I've ever, ever. I mean, that's like big smallies on Look steroids. At that that's a big one, too. On that Seville, man. That. They don't call them like a magic seville for nothing. That thing is a fish catching machine right there. I want to talk a little bit about the rig Tyler's got me using. He's got me using a medium power uh, stand up spinning rod, which is a pen legion here. Kind of the same rod you'd use for smallmouth bass fishing or salmon fishing. He's got me using this battle pen reel it's spooled up with 15 pound Invisibraid and a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader with a loop knot, which is key. He's got me fishing this little loop knot here with the uh, topwater bait. This happens to be a Sabeel uh, Banga minnow, and we're just working it across the top like you would for smallmouth or any sort of fish. And I'm telling you, when these fish come up and hit this bait, it is the most exciting topwater fishing I've ever had a chance to experience. Yeah! Double on the yeah, Sabeel. baby! Sabeel and up some big old reddies. 
The difference about saltwater fish is you feel it. You feel it in your arms. You feel it in your shoulders. You feel it in your legs because these fish fight. They fight harder, they fight longer, and they scream drag like no other fish I've ever had a chance to experience oh, before. Double trouble on the Sabils. Look at that. How sweet is that? You know Wait, what, yours man? is probably a little bigger. Well, I'll give I it to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, again, you got me on them again, buddy. Days like this are what the fishing in Tampa Bay is all about, with all the variety and all the big fish. You know, I'm so happy that Eric could come down and we could put them in all these nice, beautiful, big trophy fish that we caught. They are on fire, Skipper. They are on fire. You got us on them. That is a nice fish. And this fishery down here in Tampa is uh, unbelievable. I, it's so good down here in Tampa that I can guarantee you the next place that I'm going to come and vacation is in Tampa, Florida. And I'm going to call Tyler up again. Redfish, that's what it's all about right there, man. <laughs> that's why I came down to Florida from Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. That's, a that's nice like a one. fish of a lifetime for that's me, probably brother. Probably a 30-incher right there. That's a Thank nice you. One. It's been said before, but the thought still rings true. The great thing about fishing saltwater is you never know what you're going to get. That's what you'll find in the waters of Tampa Bay. Hi, I'm Laura Shera, and welcome to NAF Clubhouse. Unique habitats including mangrove shorelines to open water shipping canals mean if you fish this area, you gotta be ready for just about anything. With big water never too far away, you have to be prepared when that big monster swims into range. That's why fishing smart down here is fishing with a versatile bait that's effective in any situation. There's nothing better than the Berkeley Gulf Shrimp. Rig weedless to fish shallow flats or on a heavy jig to bounce on the bottom. It can cover an entire water column. With the bait's realistic profile and signature scent, it's sure to attract everything from speckled trout to tarpon. The North American Fishing Club is designed by anglers for anglers. If you fish, this is the place to be. North American Fisherman is offering you a chance to fish with our guys. Wow, what a fish. Hey, I'm Eric Cotty with North American Fisherman. If you want to come up here and fish with me, you can sign up at North American Fisherman's Facebook page, or you can go to fishingclub.com to sign up for a contest to fish with myself or Tyler Capella. Hey, it's up to you. All you have to do is enter. Go to fishingclub.com or like us on Facebook for your chance to win. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Find out on Silent Invaders, up next. There's something therapeutic about the sounds of water splashing against the shore, but all is not well beneath these tranquil waves. Invasive zebra and quagga mussels are infecting many of our lakes in ways never before experienced or even imagined. Thousands of these invaders drop to the floor each time commercial fisherman Jeff Weeborg releases his gill nets into Lake Michigan. It's uh, hard to imagine, but uh, our scientist at NOAA who studies life on the bottom has estimated that there are over four quadrillion mussels on the bottom of the lake. These destructive mussels blanket the floor of big and small lakes alike. They have invaded 20 states, lurking in hundreds of inland lakes and six major rivers. And they stick themselves to everything. So if you take a look at a pipe that mussels have entered, now you've got a problem. Utility pipes and machinery often get clogged with massive amounts of sticky mussels, and it's costing us millions. Right now, it's probably between 15 and 20 million a year to control them at the pipes. But that's only part of the problem. They can change the ecosystem in ways you don't want the ecosystem changed. Hungry zebra and quagga mussels are literally sucking in plankton, a critical part of the food chain and necessary for the survival of game fish. And the mussels have a voracious appetite. A zebra mussel the size of my thumb can filter a liter or roughly a quart of water a day. The only way these invasives can get into a lake is when a recreational boater or angler inadvertently puts them there. When traveling from one body of water to another, they either forget or don't know how 
to rid their boats of microscopic larvae. Those larvae are virtually invisible to the naked eye. There's about 100 zebra mussel larvae in this vial. The only prevention method is to clean, drain, and dry your boat every time you take it out of the water. Make sure that you don't move water of any kind from one body of water to another. Uh, that means the bait buckets and the live wells and anything else that might be contained in your, in your vessel. It's the only way to stop these invasive aquatic hitchhikers, known as the Silent Invaders. This is North American Fisherman's Field Test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Everything you see here has been tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. If you're looking for the latest in gear, this is information you can trust. First up, Larry the Lizard Lures, which are made from 100% high-grade soft plastic and have a specially designed tail, a great bait for a Carolina rig. Club member Michael Hester liked the built-in rattle, which triggered finicky fish. Next up, Abu Garcia's Veritas casting rod, which uses nanotechnology, which means it has two and a half times more impact resistance than regular standard fishing rods. Club member Walter Bush is very impressed with the flipping and casting distance. To learn more about these products or to have your gear field tested, join me at fishingclub.com. Field test, powered by Stuff. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Quebec, providing emotion since 1534. Berkeley Gulf, alive, looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. By Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Coming up, not war is light, and don't think you can fish saltwater without catching a shark or two. We return to Tampa Bay when North American Fisherman returns. Welcome to Not War. Light. Why light? Because this season we're only using light line. Three of them, in fact, all from Berkeley. Six pound, 100% fluorocarbon, eight pound Trilene XT, and six pound fire line. Pitting the best fishing knots head to head in a competition of strength. This week's challenger, the Porter Knot. Going up against last week's champion, the World's Fair Knot. Now, if you missed last week, here's how you tie it. Start by running the tag end through the eye of the hook and run up the main line before doubling back to form a loop. Bring the loop back over the double line and grasp the double line through the loop. Run the tag end through the new loop formed by the double line. Then bring the tag end back through the third loop created by step three. Final step, moisten before drawing tight. So there's the world's fair knot. It's great with mono and fluorocarbon, but I wonder if it can hold up against the port or not. We're gonna find out, because here's how to tie that one. Start by doubling the line and run the double line through the eye of the hook. Make five wraps around the doubled line. Run the loop between the eye of the hook and the first wrap. Moisten and draw tight. So there's your challenger, the porter knot. Now remember, when you trim that up, you're gonna have three tag lines. It's a strong knot, but is it strong enough? Now here we are at our Berkeley Knot Wars machine. It's all set up and ready to go with our challenger, the Porter Knot, here on the right, and last week's champion, the World's Fair Knot, on the left. So here we go, head to head, the Porter Knot versus the World's Fair Knot. Let's see which one holds up under pressure. Look at that, there it is. Once again, the World's Fair Knot holds up against its challenger, the Porter Knot. Now that was close, but we clearly saw that the Porter Knot broke first, leaving the World's Fair Knot as the champion. Now both of these are great strong knots with mono and 100% fluorocarbon. But one of the things we noticed in our testing was that with the fire line, the Porter Knot did slip a little bit. That means the World's Fair Knot is heading into next week to face a new challenger, the Fish and Fool. Now the Fish and Fool won Knot Wars back in 2009, so we already know it's a champion, but will it be able to hold up against the World's Fair Knot with lighter line? So if you want to learn how to tie either one of these knots, just head on over to our website, fishingclub.com, or better yet, download the Knot War app on your smartphone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot.
we're doing right now, we just came out here on the shoal off the beach, and there is a school of ladyfish out here. It's ladyfish, bluefish, and Spanish mackerel kind of all together in one big school. Once you find them, we're gonna take some of these baits and throw them out there, and it just turns into a war zone out here. What's happening, the reason we're out here, those fish are fun to catch too, but there's about, uh, you know, just loads and loads of sharks. Sometimes there's up to 100 sharks shadowing that school of fish out here. And once you get them all chummed up, the sharks come up to the surface, and it's extremely visual and very, very exciting stuff to see. Up, 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 right up. Yes. Keep reeling, keep reeling. He's on. Yeah, there baby. he goes. Oh, that's what I came here for, some big fish. I just wanted to catch a bunch of fish when we were down here. So I was amazed, you know, within five minutes, he's got sharks coming right to the boat. And I'm like, hey, can I, can I catch a shark? Right up, he was right here Oh at the boat. yeah, man, he just came right underneath <laughs> us. I love it, man, I love it, give me some. great. So we cut up a big chunk of ladyfish, throw it out there, and boom, we got a shark on. He's probably there not he quite done, they like to play possum. Oh man. Oh yeah. Dude, you are not kidding me. These things just fight they and fight strong. and they don't give up, man. It's a solid muscle right there. Oh, that was awesome. Putting someone on their first fish of a, of a glamorous species like that, just watching their face light up and, and just seeing their emotion, seeing that smile on their face, I mean, it's priceless, really. It's awesome. All right, go man. Ahead, well, let them go. I'm going to try and let them go. I'm just going to pop this out. For me, catching the sharks were were almost as fun as catching the redfish because they're exploding on all these ladyfish. It's just exciting fishing. 